In this video, we're going to take a look at how stars form. So we're going to look specifically at the process that leads to a star forming. We're going to look at how hot a star needs to get before fusion can start happening inside a star. We're going to look at the stages required for hydrogen to fuse into helium. And then finally, we're going to look at how a star reaches an equilibrium state uh, where it will stay for generally billions of years. So let's get started looking at how stars form. So um, the star starts with a cloud of gas in space called nebula, and it's uh, mostly hydrogen gas in this nebula, if not all hydrogen. So this ball of gas will have come from a previous supernova uh, when a, a previous star died, or it may even have existed since the Big Bang. Like it can be from various places. But the key is that hydrogen has mass. Therefore, hydrogen atoms are going to be attracted to each other through the gravitational interaction. And what happens is as they move closer and closer together, gravitational potential energy is transferred into kinetic energy. And if you want to know more about how that works, you need to look into the radial gravitational fields topic to look at gravitational potential energy. So that's the general process there. So kinetic energy rises, that means the temperature of the star rises. Because as you learn about in the thermal physics part of the course, the kinetic energy of gas particles is directly proportional to their temperature measured in Kelvin. So the first thing that happens as temperature rises is that the electrons attached to the hydrogen atoms gain enough energy to actually become, escape. And they leave behind hydrogen nuclei. So the star is what we could call plasma. Um, the star keeps getting even hotter from this point, and eventually the kinetic energy of the hydrogen nuclei is, in, is sufficient to overcome the electrostatic repulsion between the positively charged hydrogen nuclei. Um, so what that means is the two nuclei can get close enough together that the strong force will bind them together to form a helium nucleus. Okay, so let's have a look at that in more detail. So. In the electric fields part of the course, you will learn that you can calculate the potential energy of two charges using the equation that you can see here. If they're both hydrogen, uh, that means that's two protons. So if we want to get into the range of the strong force, we need to get to a distance of about five femtometers apart. So that's why that's been put in for R. So we can put the numbers in and do a calculation, and we need to provide 4.6 times 10 to the minus 14 joules of energy to get into the range of the strong force. So as there are two hydrogen nuclei fusing, each of them would have to have 2.3 times 10 to the minus 14 joules of kinetic energy. As you saw from the kinetic theory part of the course, we can calculate the kinetic energy of a gas uh, particle using its temperature. So in this case, we can work out what temperature we need for the hydrogen nuclei to have enough kinetic energy. And we can see that it's 1.1 billion Kelvin for the average hydrogen particle to have enough kinetic energy to fuse. However, what you should also know from the kinetic theory part of the course is that at a given temperature, gas particles have a range of kinetic energies given by a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution that you can see. So actually, the temperature doesn't quite need to be 1.1 billion. Being a few hundred million Kelvin will be sufficient to give some hydrogen atoms enough energy to fuse and form a stable star. So that's generally what the temperature will be. Okay, so that's how fusion occurs. Let's actually now look at the process of fusion. So the first part, we have two hydrogen, run that's regular hydrogen nuclei fusing together, and they form hydrogen two. So it's hydrogen with one proton and one neutron, which is called deuterium. In this process, to conserve charge and lepton number, a positron and an electron neutrino are also released. And you can learn more about that in the subatomic particles part of the course. Um, so a positron, just for your information, is the antiparticle of an electron. So it has a positive charge, but it has the same mass as an electron. So the next stage is deuterium fuses with another hydrogen atom, and that forms helium-3. So helium with only one neutron, not two. 
But that stage releases a gamma photon, which will be critical in forming the equilibrium condition of a star. The last stage, two helium-3 nuclei fuse together, and that leaves a helium-4 nucleus, and that releases two protons that can go undergo further fusion reactions. So that is the process of fusion. So let's look at why this is important to form the equilibrium stage. So the process of fusion, as we saw before, releases gamma photons. And um, for electromagnetic radiation, we can calculate the momentum of a photon using momentum is Planck's constant divided by wavelength. So we can see that there's a different way to calculate momentum of photons compared to particles, but they also have momentum. So just like with particles, if a photon is either absorbed by or is reflected off of something else, that object will experience a force, just like if you throw an object at a wall, the wall will experience a force when it bounces off. And it's this force that stops the star collapsing in on itself. So the star is trying to collapse due to the gravitational attraction, and this outward force is known as radiation pressure. So if we are having enough fusion reactions occurring, the outward radiation pressure will be equal to the gravitational attraction, and this is how an equilibrium state is formed. And this star will now be known as what we call a main sequence star, which we'll explore further in the next video. Okay, so at this point, what you should be able to do is explain how we actually form a star from a nebula, so the causes of that. We should be able to work out how much kinetic energy and therefore the temperature required for fusion. We should be able to describe the stages of the fusion reaction. And finally, you should be able to explain how that leads to an equilibrium stage. So that's this video. The next video I'm going to look at actually how stars end. So we've looked at how they form. We're now going to look at what happens when they run out of fuel. And we'll look at the various stages that they go through and the different types of stars that we get from the death process. And we'll finish off by looking at the life cycle of a star on something called a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. So that finishes this video on star formation. I hope you found that useful to learn about this particular um, part of the cosmology topic. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment on this video and let me know and I'll try and answer those for you. But thank you very much for taking the time to watch.